My name is Jill Cox Cordova, and I'm conducting what I call the Do Something Different interviews, in which I talk to people about all the different things that they're doing differently this year, whether there's a pandemic or just because. Today's interview is with Gary Hines of Sounds of Blackness fame. Blackness. Keep, keep on. Gary Hines, you may know, is a musical genius. He can write music, play instruments, and sing. And he's also the director of Sounds of Blackness. So without further ado, here's my interview with Gary in which we talk about what he and the group are doing differently. I am delighted and honored to talk to you today, Gary. Thank you for doing this with me. The honor and pleasure are all mine and the feelings mutual, Queen Jill. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, you and I actually have something in common. We're both M McAllister graduates. We are indeed. The what was East your Scott. major there, by the way? Uh, I, my major was uh, the Master Discipline in Sociology. Doing Sounds of Blackness is a calling for you. Do you feel your major yes. helped you or McAllister helped you do that? Yes, all of the above, McAllister and the sociology major. And, you know, at the time, you you think it's not going to apply, or maybe you, you wonder how it will apply, but then the next thing you know, you look up and there it is, you know, and you're saying, it reminds me uh, back in, uh, I'm a native of Yonkers, New York, and uh, shout out to the East Coast, of course, and uh, my old uh, junior high school uh, typing teacher, Miss Carlson, I'll never forget, she was kind of crotchety and ornery, Miss Carlson, <laughs> but she would say, one day you'll thank me for teaching you to type and sure enough, she was right. So the same uh, uh, holds true for McAllister and sociology. I'm thankful. <laughs> and then, of course, Sounds of Blackness started at McAllister. Yes. So tell uh, me how it was a calling for you. Well, just a little more about that, uh, that McAllister history. As I'm sure you know, Jill, uh, in 1969, uh, the college embarked upon a very ambitious program to recruit, recruit students of color called EEO, Expanded Educational Opportunities. And uh, long story short, at one time, there were almost 200 students of color on campus, primarily African-American, of course, Latino and Asian and Native and so forth. Um, but one of the offshoots of that is that the students themselves uh, organized different uh, um, uh, organizations and functions, Black Arts Midwest was a theater group, uh, the BLAC, the Black Liberation Affairs Committee, the political cultural group, and this this 50 voice choir called the McAllister Black Voices, which later in January 1971, when they brought me on as, as director, uh, you know, the good Lord's direction was to, to be or attempt to be a musical speaking voice for the culture. Jazz, blues, gospel, spirituals, reggae, ragtime, rock, hip hop. And we needed a name that would reflect that. And that's why we changed from McAllister Black Voices to the sounds of blackness, meaning every sound of the black experience. So you're not, to, to set the record straight, although you may sing gospel music, you're not a gospel group, correct? Correct. Gospel is at the heart and soul of what we do, and, and we, we, we gently correct people all the time because the industry, uh, it, it's convenient for the industry to classify any group just in one genre kind of thing. Uh, when, when We're not the only group that is, is uh, sings multiple genres, um, but and, and with us, they jump, oh, they must, there's, there's all these voices, they must be gospel exclusively. So uh, we gently, it, it, it's certainly not, uh, it, it's a, not an insult, or it's just inaccurate. It's because we tell people all the time, especially our church brothers and sisters, and this is part of the glorious culture that God has blessed us with. You can't fully appreciate the glory, hallelujah, of the gospel without the pain of the blues and the history of the spirituals and the complexity and the statements of jazz. So they're all, as the great Billy Taylor, Dr. Billy Taylor used to say, uh, part of the family of African-American music. And that's what Sounds of Blackness does. Excellent, excellent. Well, you mentioned that you're a, a large group. How many people are in the group now, <laughs> counting, counting musicians? Oh, absolutely, yes, and I'm so glad you said that, and I'll tell why in a second. Uh, but our, our full uh, complement is 30, and that consists of 20 vocalists and 10 musicians, and, I, and I'm glad you give the band some props because so often, especially in the media like this, uh, Queen Jill, uh, the focus is on the vocals, and I, we get that. But, but we, we always take every opportunity we can to, to let the public know that that wonderful instrumentation and accompaniment that you're hearing 
on all of our recordings and our live shows, that's not hired help. The, the, the band, they are as much full-fledged members of Sounds of Blackness as are the vocalists. So in the past, before 2020, how would the group have rehearsed? Uh, it would be a corporate rehearsal. Uh, we, we normally rehearse uh, vocals separately and the band separately until we get closer to a production or a performance or a tour or whatever. And then of course, we combine the two entities kind of thing. Um, but now uh, with uh, Corona and uh, the realities of uh, the contemporary realities, we'll put it that way, uh, we rehearse in the same method that you and I are interviewing right now via Zoom. Um, and it's, we've been doing that for about, just coming on about a month now. And uh, at, at first, it, well, obviously it's very different, of course, um, and especially with Zoom, and, and thank God for Zoom, um, but, but the limitation <laughs> is that we can't simultaneously sing together. So we actually, I have to actually work with each individual vocalist for a few moments. And then, so, it, so it's rather tedious, but you know, I, I told the group early on that this is the situation, you know, either we can cry about it or make the best of it. And lo and behold, the way that the Lord's worked it out, Jill, it's really a blessing in disguise because now as we do this individual focus on their technique, um, and, and particulars of their vocals. We, I would never have done that to that degree in the corporate face-to-face -face setting. So, you know, it's uh, e either it's lemon or lemonade. So we, we decided to make it lemonade. You told your followers, be optimistic, hold on, change is coming, everything is going to be all right. And for those of us who are fans of Sounds of Blackness, we know that those were names of three of your songs. Right? Yes. So, yes. so I thought that that was clever and, and brilliant. So today, oh, what would be your message of, of hope? Would you use those same songs? Would you, are you working on new music that reflects what we're going through now? What would be your message today? I told them, you know, we're complaining about, uh, you know, at home, uh, you know, for a few weeks now. Anne Frank was in an attic for two years without DoorDash, without, uh, you know, um, Hulu, without <laughs> Netflix, without the internet, two years. So my message was to toughen up, you know, to, to man up, woman up, child up, family up. And then the other uh, um, uh, example I gave Jill was for our ancestors. I said, our ancestors were in the hull of a ship for weeks at a time. Again, no DoorDash, no Hulu, no Netflix, no, no internet, and then, so, if they can survive and, and thrive from that, we can handle this. So, so a little tougher message for us to, you know, put this in perspective. And uh, yeah, it's not fun, but you know, you can cry about it or you can make the best of it. And in terms of your second part of your question, yes, we are. We're working on uh, three songs right now. Uh, one is called Humanity. And uh, the, 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 the catchphrase with humanity chorus, uh, it says, humanity, stop all the insanity right now so that we're working on humanity then we're working on a song called uh, make it through the madness uh, and it says we're going to make it through the madness i know we can i know we will and the third song uh, is called lift your head up uh, lift your head up to the sky uh, time to get up wipe the tears from your eyes uh, so those three are are in the works as we speak literally so i know that back in i think it was 2017 there was hashtag optimistic challenge So perhaps you yes. can start a challenge with one of these three songs or maybe all three. How, how would you feel about that? I, I would love that, you know, and, and that's that precedent has been set, as you so wisely uh, uh, point out. And, and now it's even more, I think, beneficial for that type of thing to happen, you know, given the current circumstances. Anything that you feel that you, you personally or the group um, will do from this point on that you, you've learned during this era of restrictions? Uh, well, again, to, uh, yes, it is the short answer, Jill, and, and, and the specifics of that yes are to make the most of it. And, and, you know, I've been posting some things online, you know, that tell people, you know, what are you doing? Um, are you getting in or out of shape? Are you getting bitter or are you getting better? Are you getting bored or are you getting restored? You know, you, you, when you do go out sometimes, like to the, the gas station or the grocery store, you hear even strangers talking about how, they're, how bored they are. And it's like, okay, 
So these are the same <laughs> people who two months ago were saying, oh, if I only had more time, I'd get in shape, I'd learn a language, I would do this, I'd do that. It's like, okay, now be careful what you ask for. Now you got it. Are you doing those things? There's so many things that you can do that don't cost a dime and that just a month ago you claim you were crying about that you didn't have time for. So to, to make the most of it, the sounds used to have a, a song in our repertoire called Make Every Day Count. And that's, that's our word today for everybody. To even in the midst of the madness, again, to use another uh, song title, to make every day count. I think we should start that as a challenge. I'm going to challenge the audience to, to do that. Awesome, awesome, Queen Jill. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Gary, for your time. I appreciate you. Thank you. The feeling is very mutual, Queen Jill. 